a Poisson distribution model. Um, it's been about a couple of years since my last video, which is a bit unusual for most YouTubers, but I don't class myself as a YouTuber. Uh, I have been still betting and doing statistical modelling in the last two years, but life has got in the way of um, social media and uploading videos, unfortunately. Um, but I, I came back and checked in on the on the account um, a couple of weeks ago and saw the amount of likes and the amount of love that I'd got on the on the video. So I thought, you know what, I'll do another one because I'm actually back in the swing of things, so I might as well start recording again. So, to briefly talk about what we are looking at, the Poisson distribution model, you can Google it, there are tons of great um, episodes on YouTube, there are tons of great tutorials about you know what the Poisson distribution model is, but in a nutshell, it measures the probability of an independent event occurring a certain amount of times, apologies for the spelling error, within a set period. So. If you know the average number of times an event is likely to occur, you can then use the model to predict how likely other outcomes are based on that given average. It all sounds like a lot of waffle for anybody who's not that into mathematical modelling. In football terms, if we know the average goal scored and conceded, we can then use them to calculate defensive and attacking strengths of teams and then multiply those together to come out with some sort of match outcome or some sort of expected number of goals in a given game. Uh, I find it extremely interesting and it's aided me quite a lot in my um, betting so I thought we could have a quick look at it and I could talk about a bit of an updated view on it from my last video. Okay so firstly what we need to do is look at, well I'll tell you what data set I'm using first, this is the current English Premier League season and I'm making this video for anyone who's watching in the future um, in June 2020 so just after the resumption of play after the coronavirus. Um, which is worth considering when betting at the moment if people are watching it currently. Home and away statistics are not going to carry quite the same way as they did beforehand when playing in front of empty stadiums. There's still going to be a bit of a bias because of the unusual surroundings, the playing surface, the travelling, etc. But not quite as much of an advantage playing at home, I would suggest, as playing in front of a packed partisan crowd. So... That might be worth just considering, but all things equal, let's ignore that and let's just look at the statistics. So we're using data from 1920 in the Premier League. In my previous video, I used the previous season's data. That was because I recorded it in the October, I think, and there wasn't, in my opinion, enough data to, to model. But we're near the end of the season now, so I've used the data from the current season and I've used all of the teams. So I haven't excluded the recently promoted teams. I've got all of the teams in the current season, so everything is as you see it. So, firstly what we need to do is to calculate the number of the average number of home goals scored. So if we use Arsenal as an example, home goals scored, away goals, um, home goals conceded, sorry, away goals scored and away goals conceded. So these are the columns here that we're looking at. So to do that, you just do a normal average calculation. So you go through, find out how many goals Arsenal have scored at home and divide it by the amount of games they've played and that comes out at 1.73 goals at home on average for Arsenal. We do the same with the way goal, uh, goals conceded at home, that A is really, it stands for against but it's really confusing me. Um, so we do the same for the goals conceded at home, so we're looking at the amount of goals Arsenal have conceded divided by the amount of games they've played and then we do the same at away. Um, so it is Arsenal's away goals scored divided by the amount of games and the goals conceded away from home divided by the amount of games. So we do that for all of the teams and that's what we've done here. And that is to allow us to calculate the stat that we actually need for the Poisson distribution model which is the attacking strength and the defensive strength stats. And to calculate these we use the stats that we've got for Arsenal here. For attacking strength at home we're going to use this 1.73 and we're going to divide that by the number down here which is the average and we come out with 1.16 and then we're going to do the same for the defensive strength and we're going to use the average and again for the away we'll do the same and that's where we get these columns here and these are the columns that we're going to need to calculate our Poisson distribution models the others are not going to be as important going forward these are the ones we're going to need to calculate the outcomes of games um, so if we skip on to the next slide, I've used Tottenham versus West Ham, which was on the 24th of June 2020. Um, I recorded it before the game was played actually, but I'm quite glad that I haven't had a chance to upload the video until afterwards, just to prove that there was no bias in the result predictions, or I'm only using stats that look favourable. I don't know how favourable they do look, to be honest, but 
Uh, so let's have a look. So you can see in slide two, I've taken, I've isolated the Tottenham and West Ham stats for you from the previous slide, so that makes it a little bit clearer. So we've got Tottenham's attacking strength and defensive defensive strength at home, their attacking strength and defensive strength away, and the same for West Ham. Now I've highlighted in green the stats that we're actually going to need to predict the outcome of this game. So we're going to need Tottenham's home stats because they're playing at home, and West Ham's away stats because they're playing away. And if we look down here, this is the overall result we get coming out at the, the percentage chance of the outcomes home, draw and away. So we've got 66% for Tottenham, 20% a draw and 14% a West Ham win. Uh, and the way that we get that is by calculating, we'll do, for, for Tottenham first we have to find out how many goals they're likely to score. And this is where the Poisson modelling comes in. So you can use an online Poisson distribution calculator to do this because if you do Google the actual model, you'll see that there's an equation that you can use, which is pretty confusing. Um, so you can use it and do a walk through yourself, but there are Poisson distribution calculators online that are free and easy to use. And you punch the numbers in from the attacking defensive strength and the number of occurrences, and you can find out what the percentage is. So I've gone from 0 to 5 for home and away, so I don't think we're likely to get more than 5 goals per side in the game. Uh, and the way that these numbers are calculated here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so these are independent of the opposition. This is the amount of times we expect the home team, in this case Tottenham, to score 0 goals, 1 goal, 2 goals, 3 goals, 4 goals or 5 goals. And the same for the away team, in this case West Ham. How often, what percentage of the time will you expect them to score 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goals? So this is independent of the opposition, so we're not doing any modelling against the actual fixture here. This is just to find out these figures um, using the attack and defensive strength. And that's what we've done here. So we can see that we expect Tottenham to score zero goals just under 14% of the time, one goal just over 27%, same for two goals, and then three, four, five, and the same for West Ham we've done down here. And then what we do, in order to calculate the chances of the actual result the, the result of the actual game so we need to play the two stats off against each other so what we do then is we calculate we multiply the two together and we get the percentage here so the Poisson distribution model tells us that all of the white ones here these are Tottenham wins the orange are draws and the Clara are West Ham wins so looking at this the most likely result we can see is probably what one nil. So one nil looks like just under a fourteen percent chance of a one nil win. Just under that for a two nil win, and then you're looking at two one. Uh, sorry, one one nine point four six, and just under that two one to Tottenham, which is nine point four one. Aside from that. They drop off quite a lot, so we're not really expecting Tottenham to score more than two goals. I don't think in this game we've gone from 13.44 to 8.92 here. And West Ham, I mean, not more than one goal at all, really. So we're looking at the results you'd be looking at are 1 0, 2 0, 2 1, 1 1, I guess you'd be taking a punt on. So the highest percentage chance, if you were going to purely use this as a, as a model to predict the correct score, you'd be looking at, I guess, 1-0, very closely followed by 2-0. Um, and what we actually saw in the match as it played out, it was 2-0 it ended up, um, but it was 1-0 until about, what was it, the 81st, 82nd minute? And it looked like it was going to be ending 1-0. It did actually end 2-0 because Harry Kane scored uh, fairly late on. I mean, it's not necessarily a fail-proof way of predicting an exact result. I wouldn't usually use it for correct score betting because it's a little bit... Well, as you know, there's so many variables in football that correct score betting is pretty tough. But if you were to use it in this instance, you wouldn't have been far off. And if I ever do do correct score betting, I usually I'll be on the Betfair markets and I'd usually have a couple of different score lines and I'd trade in and out throughout the match. So I'd definitely have had 1-0, 2-0 and probably 1-1 in this instance um, and traded as I saw appropriate through the game. So I think those three results, you would be not far off. Um, using this model. I tend to use it more as an indicator to tell me what sort of result I should be looking at home, away and draw and how strong 
that result would be. So if we were looking at down here, 50% home win, 30% um, draw and 20% away maybe, I, I probably wouldn't be lumping on Tottenham because it's going to be a lot closer. I'd probably be going for a draw, whereas 66% you're thinking, well, the stats do suggest that they're in a good position. And then you've got to put your own knowledge on top of that. And you've got to look at team news. You've got to look at, you know, look at your injuries, look at your, uh, the state of play in terms of the coronavirus, for example, and whether you think that that percentage should come down a little bit because we're not looking at the home and away bars as much. Um, look at the weather conditions, you know, the usual sort of thing. You do need to put that on top. I wouldn't suggest purely going with statistical uh, data to do football betting because there's so much more to it um, but if we do look down here I've also put in so this is the percentage we're looking at cross on a predicting a 66% chance of a win 20% draw 14% away win um, if you add up all of the percentages in, in these they might be a couple of percent out <laughs> um, as for example 60 80 90 now this one does add up but if you add them but basically that I've used different rounding rules slightly I'm I'm not going to pretend that it's going to be completely accurate um, but it is <laughs> to a half a percent accurate so six six percent and then i've looked a little bit into um what i call value betting and this is something that i'll be doing videos on in the future but if you convert 66 percent of a home chance of a home win into odds then you're looking at about a 1.52 chance uh in terms of the odds that's the sort of odds you should be getting 1.52 the bookies that i were looking at at the time are actually up in 1.65 so that represents a value bet so there's value in that so you could actually put a bit on there the draw you should be getting odds of about five you're only getting 390 so that's not good value and the away cross and suggestion you should be looking at getting 7.14 and you're only getting 5.80 so even though it seemed a pretty obvious Tottenham win the actual value is also still in putting money on a Tottenham win so that might have been able to inform your decision going forward when betting as well um, this was a bit of a simple quick rough run through the possum distribution model um, i hope that you might have found it useful in the next video i'm going to be looking at something which i've been working on over the last couple of years which is quite exciting and that i hope that you might find interesting and that's betting uh, my betting st strategies that are used to bet on draws so draw betting is heavily underused in my opinion um, most punters want to see a win they want to see goals they're not really interested in a dull nil nil or a kg one one and the bet the bookies odds will normally reflect that and the amount of money pumped into either the home or the away team winning will mean that the odds for the draw can go up and they're often underutilized and if you do a bit of modeling and a little bit of digging you can find games that are quite high likelihood of being a draw and with an increasing stake method i've managed to find a very profitable way of turning draw betting into quite a lucrative model so that's something i'll be looking at in the next section in the next video sorry if we have